It's 2010, it's February the 21st, and I'm just doing part two of the visit to Dhaka, church and cemetery and castle. I had to go back to my van to get more cameras, so this is why it's part two. So I go back, take pictures of all the memorials and some gravestones and the castle, have a wander around the village, and then eventually I think I get to Dalmain. Not sure. Right, here we go then. This is take two. Try a different speed on this one, I'll just test it a minute. Yeah, it seems to work okay. I think it might make the tape last a bit longer. I just got back to the camper van now, so I'm going back. I'm going to drive the van up. I don't really like leaving it isolated because you never know, there might be arts and tipsies that there are tipsies about. But, um, I don't want to come back and have no, nothing, <laughs> no home, it's just me home, innit? Um, so I'm going to drive up near the church, and see if I can still, if it's still open, I'll go and take some pictures of the plaques inside, and then I'll nip in the pub, if it's open, um, might, which might not be, might be like other pubs where we are, they don't open the day, it's, you know, and then I'm going to Dalmain. Now this time, I'm learning. I've taken a top up of cameras, tapes and batteries because that was a bit um, unnerving. I ran out. I didn't run out completely. I had them in the van, but then I had to break what I was doing, break the continuity. So I've got to go back inside. I just hope it's open. And uh, I'll a bag, banana, drink of lemonade. It's beautiful where I'm sitting, where I am now, I'm, I'm on the outskirts, I'm right up in Dhaka really, I've just taken a picture of a little bridge that leads into the village, a stone bridge, a wiggly little bridge. And I don't know if you can hear this on the tape, but there's a stream right behind me. I'm just going to give Zara a ring. It's only midday, I'm doing very well, I'm going back to the church in a minute, take some pictures. I've just given Zara an update, phoned her up and told her I wish she was here and how lovely it all is. <coughs> and um, I'll be recording again soon. Right, I've parked up now, right outside the pub. The Horse and Farrier is its name. Doesn't look like it's open, but there's a post office as well. I'll have a look at the times in a minute. I'm going to go back to the church. Back inside the church now. Take some pictures.
Another window dedicated to the hustles. Christopher Hustle. 
board May the 29th, 
wanted to make sure I did this um, properly this visit. Yeah, it's set in a very beautiful setting. There's sheep everywhere, rolling hills, great big hills. <coughs> very well maintained. Beautiful surroundings, absolutely beautiful. I do know a lot more about the history of Dakar Castle now 
Um, it is at what's called a Pele Tower. It's like a fortress. Um, a lot of them were built to keep the Scots out in the past. And Dakar has got quite a, a good, significant history going back in time where king, many kings have um, met there t t to discuss things this way and the, and the other. And then you've got the Reavers, which were board, border raiders that um, were kept out by the Pele Tower. Um, Dakar Castle, I believe, is still under the influence of um, the Hassel family. I think they still own it, and it's rented out. And I also discovered that you, you can walk from the castle all the way to Dalmain. There's a little backtrack. So hopefully I'll be able to get back again one day and um, do that walk. That would be brilliant to either sort of park up at, at Zaka, do the walk, and then come back. Yeah, I'll, I'll definitely try that. Back to the cassette. I'm just going to stop there a minute because the batteries need changing on the tape recorder. Stop in for a moment. Right, starting up again. I've changed the batteries. Here we go. All the buildings in the village, it's not a very big village, it's very small and there's little old cottages, nothing thatched, but um, stone, all made of stone, small windows. I took a picture of one which is called the Smithy, so it could have been the blacksmiths in the past, I suppose. Bye. 
Molly. Do the 
tape really, but um, I've been through the entrance for lots of big pictures, not like taking photos inside. And the dining area, lots of portraits. So I'm in mean, what looks like a priest hole at the moment. Another room, little sitting room. Church. I think I'll have a hag here and then I'm gonna then I'll make way right down to the lower garden. I've been a bit broken with the tape because I haven't been I thought I could have taped going around the house which would have been very useful really. I might try and do that tomorrow. Um, go and uh, do that. There's a beautiful um stream. Might get picked up on the tape. Uh, I don't know which way it's going, it might be coming from the Ellswater, I'm not sure. 
really. Um, I'm just going back up towards the gate that leads me back into the pretty garden, but I'm going to try the lower garden, see if it's any good. Go down to the lower garden, we follow the perimeter wall, <coughs> and get views from the garden from there. Fence, we're going down to the lower garden. Little stepway going down. Very pretty and wild. I think this is called the wild bit. Down here. They've actually got a wild garden as well. Yeah, obviously when the daffodils are out, there are loads of those. Some seats. Little pond there. It's a little wild one that you can obviously walk around. There's a path going all the way around it. Nice to be able to have one with a few of down there. I can see. If I go up here, I can take a different picture of Dalmain house this little pathway that I'm going down. Ah, yes. A side view. So the walk. There we come to a field, another view of the domain. And a stream, which goes under a little wooden, a little brick bridge, I mean. A stream with ducks on it. That's very pretty as well. Family friend, Thelmare, 1962 to 1989. So 
this um, pet. In here. Um, and that's some of these might be quite old tests. 1960 to 1976. Bunty, children's con. Area, 1931 to 1941. Nelly, Faithful Collie, 1937 to 1941. This includes the pets as well, which is really good. Sammy Bumble Honey, Tim Ronnie Barney, Loved Corgis, 1946 to 1974. Overgrown, one I can't read there. So there's a little pet cemetery here as well. Which I found by just by chance by looking in the trees. I'll take a picture. Sorry if I've missed any out. That makes it good really since we like our dogs that they've uh, got a little place for their pets. I had to leave two of mine behind on Barrier Road. Three, including Lucy, I suppose, and if you included the catfish. <coughs> well, it's been an absolutely amazing afternoon. Really enjoyed myself. Um, it's been brilliant, I think. to get more information. Um, for example, in the 1700s, sometime in the 17th century, the Hazels, as they call themselves, had to escape to York, apparently. They went to York. Bit of history there. Um, and left behind people and they just told the people that were staying behind just to, when the Scots came, Scot, you know, Scotland were invading, to let them have anything. And they were surprised that um, Dolmain was still in one piece because um, they'd been invaded by Scotland, England was. So the hassles at the time had to go off to... Um, they had to go off to... Uh, York. They escaped to York because, you know, Scot Scotland had invaded. They went off to York. So that's all very interesting as well. I've done that. Um, little bits of information will come out as time goes on. Um, there's bits and pieces, and I've bought two books. Now, um, two history books, I've spent like 80 quid, 100 pounds today, just at Dalmain alone, getting postcards, I bought some cakes, some chutney, um, books, just little souvenirs I've, I've bought, and, you know, it's absolutely fascinating, this place. Interesting. The family that McCosh, Hazel McCosh, um, they kept the name. That was um, his grandfather, was, the bloke there, Robert, he's called McCosh, I think, or Hazel McCosh. His grandfather was called Hazel, not Hassel, Hazel. So he kept that name. He wanted to keep the Hazel name. Hassel, Hazel, I don't know, name in the family, um, and his father's name was um, McCosh, so they kept both names going, you know, double-barreled name. Um, so that was, that was quite interesting. So, you know, I'm, I'm just, I, I was dying to tell them really what I knew about our history. 
But I thought I'm going to do that on the next visit because I've spent a lot of time just, I could go around there again, just absorbing the atmosphere. I mean, the family actually still live in the building. They still use some of the really old stuff, like if they have a lot of people staying, they, they still sleep in the, you know, the Tudor beds and things like that. And they've got Tudor panelling. I learned a little bit about what things were as well, just like the stuff at Botch and Place. Panelling and little bits of information about various members of the family that were merchants or, you know, and all that sort of thing. Um, yeah, it's just very interesting. I, I wanted to go around again. I even found, um, I even found, you know, the priest hall where they used, you know, when the Roman Catholics were being persecuted, they used to hold the hide the priests. Now, apparently the Hazel family didn't find this priest hole to the 18th century. That's over 200 years before it was discovered. That's how well concealed these places were. Um, the Pelly the Pelly Tower, that was part of the house, has been built up around. It's still there. Pelly Tower is where people used to hide when Scotland were trying to invade the English, and they used to hide in the Pelly Tower. But apparently built round the Pelly Tower. It's still there. There's a top part was removed to fit in with the style of the house. Um, but the original structure is still there. And they were designed to uh, uh, pre prevent it attack. So they've, they've got plants. I suppose I might buy a plant next time I come down, uh, come over here, because um, they've got plants that are grown in the garden. So I might actually bring some home to put in our garden before I leave. I should stop off here and buy some. Um, I might have to do it because they're not open Friday, so I'll have to go and buy some on Thursday. I'm going to Carlisle tomorrow. And I should pop back here Thursday and I might, well I will leave them some information that I've got about us in an envelope and with my address and then, you know, just in case they haven't got that, but I'm going to read through the history books tonight. Um, I bought two history books, you know, I mean, it was worth it. I bought all the history books they've, they've had. I bought them all. I bought one about um, the diaries of Lady Clifford as well, because I thought that might have some information in it. Because um, um, one of uh, Hazel's, Ed, one of the Edward, I think, he was um, a steward to her, whatever a steward is. There's lots. I've really got so much in my head I can't sort properly. It's a very fractured tape, this, but it's actually because I was thinking a lot, taking it in, absorbing, using other parts of me rather than speaking, because I couldn't... I felt I was invading when I went in the house with the tape recorder, so I didn't actually use the tape recorder in the house. Because it hardly... I think I tried using it a couple of times, but it was... I, I don't know. I didn't feel, feel right. Because they don't like you taking photos, so... You know, I could only take photos in the garden and the outside of the house. Um, I'm hoping in these history books there will be pictures of the ancestors. And I'm hoping I'll get something at Carlisle tomorrow. But um, they were very important people, this family. They owned a lot of land. They still do own, like, a lot of the valley down around here. They even own the, the, the bed of Oldswater Lake. Um, they, they, they were people, you know, in communication with royalty, aristocracy, you know, they were um, high up in all those sort of circles. And, you know, they hold, they hold different horsey things here, I think. I feel quite relaxed here, I wouldn't mind camping here. On this bit of grass that I'm on in my camper because they've got beautiful pictures of um, the, the Eva Hassel, the one that went off caravan in Canada. They she even designed her own caravan. You, you know, this is going back in the 20s, 30s, or when it, whenever it was. She even designed how she wanted her caravan, but of course she was on a religious mission, get, going out in the middle of nowhere to, to help convert people to Christianity. Um, but she, she was a, a caravaner. You know, she was a brave woman in those days, going off to Canada with the wild bears. And
and everything. And of course I found where she's buried now and I've been in there. I know these aren't direct to us, but they go through, I go back to a direct line, and so do they go back to a direct bloodline of John Hazel, or, or Hassel, whatever you like to call, call it. Um, so we've linked, it's 500 years back. It just shows you how, how, you know, one side of the family. I think a lot of our family, though, even the pages, the sizes, the wares and the oaks, were, you know, they weren't poverty-stricken people. They were landowners, farmers, yeomen, um, you know, because, um, you know, they, they had wills and things, big wills. Not everyone had a will. They didn't, oh, you didn't always have a will like the ones we've got unless you were of importance. You never had a will put in the uh, Canterbury thing, the prerogative court of Canterbury, what it's called. Um, you never, you know, it wasn't allowed. But we, I, I wanted to ask them, you know, a bit more history about before, you know, have they, how far have they gone back? That's what I wanted to know, really. There might be something in the book, so I thought before I place that to them, I would do a bit of background reading on what they've done. Um, you know, because why, why, you know, they must know, people like that must know that they came from Cambridgeshire. There must be something that happened in the past. Did they change sides with the king? You know, did, did they turn over to the other side? You know, it's like a dark secret that was kept in the family. This is only me speculating. Something, you know, I might pick something up in these books yet, but um, they were, they know, important people, you know. Um. They don't mention the family of love, though, a dissenters movement that they belong to at Bottisham and Bolsham. There's no mention of that. That's why I wondered if they would ever get round to doing the history up in the Cambridgeshire area. And it's just interesting because we are linked to them. And, you know, we've got Isaacsons as well, that they were quite well off. We, 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 we need to know about them as well, and all the poor people, of course. You know, which I found a few of those, but it's fascinating. By the one letter O, Mary Ann Oak Brooks. From that letter, from that one letter of the alphabet came all this information. That that was the link that took us down that route. And it's fascinating. We've got loads more to do on our own family. I mean, it's it's all got to be documented properly and everything. Yeah, it's all sorted out. I've got I could spend a whole six months just doing this side of the family, you know, I mean, I've got my dad's side to do as well, yeah. This is on my mum's side. And then we got the German side. I need to go to London. I must get the ball rolling on the Skype. You know, this is a lifetime's work I'm doing here, and, you know, I know not everyone, you know, thinks, well, thinks I'm crazy going off in a camper van chasing me tree, you know. I'm sat here in the, in the grounds of Dalmain, as I'm doing this tape, with sheep all around me. And the house, the back of the house, I can't, um, and the entrance to, to the um, public entrance there. I had two guides giving me loads of information, but like I said, I held back about... I did put something in the guest book, though. I said I was... Um, we had an ancestral link from Bottisham in Cambridgeshire, and I, uh, I just put the name, the name in the book, it asked for reasons, and I, I said I was family, doing family research. But I never, you know, came up and said, oh yeah, I'm related to you and all that. I didn't do that. I wanted to come as an observer to see, you know, and then if I come back on Thursday, you know, I hand them some stuff, they might not want it, they might not be interested, I don't know. Um, but, you know, there you go. That's me, I've had my bit of Dolmain chocolate cake. And I've got three more pieces of Dolmain cake. I've got some marmalade and some chutney made by them. And I've got these books and leaflets and postcards and little 
souvenirs that I've bought to take back with me to Sinzara. And uh, it's been a brilliant day. I'm, I'm going off to, driving off to Milmaby now, just for a drive. Not to, um, you know, see Eileen yet. I'm, keep, I'm doing Eileen on Thursday. So I don't want to, like, go and see her and then just say, so I've got to go and do my tree. I need, I need to get my tree stuff done. And then I can go and tell her all about it. So, I'm off now. So, they shut at five o'clock. They might lock me out the car park. Um, yeah, brilliant day. I've had, it's been really good and I'm coming back again. I don't mind paying the fee again either, you know, to go and have another look round. It's brilliant. I enjoyed it. I wish I could have taken some photos there of all the big portraits. But they had people watching all the time, so I couldn't. And not only that, it's not good for, you know, to, for people to take pictures, but I just hope there's some in these books, you know, of these um, ancestors. Descendants of a common ancestor, I should say. I was just reading through the booklet. Apparently, Sir Edward Hassel was brought up by Elizabeth, the wife of Bishop Rainbow, because he was an orphan when he was ten. They don't mention his parents, do they? John Hassel and Elizabeth Lawrence. They don't mention that. Why was he orphaned? This is interesting. So he was brought up to Edward Hassel by Bishop Ringbow, Bishop of Carlisle. And the aunt, Elizabeth. Edward Hassel was, of course, Richard's grandson. So what happened to John and Elizabeth? Richard's great-grandson. Um, Sir Edward Hassel's father was a Reverend Edward Hassel, the son of John and Helen. Interesting. That's quite interesting. Because I've just read in the little handbook which has been done by Robert Hazel McCosh they acknowledge that the family come from Bottisham, Cambridgeshire so they are aware anyway I've got those some pictures for them of the inside of Bottisham Place so I'm going to do that on Thursday so they do know we are definitely linked to them they've acknowledged it right well after a very torturous drive I thought I'd wander over to Melbourne for the evening and I think the gearbox might be going on this. I'm not sure, but I had trouble getting in into reverse, and God. Um, so someone told me where I need live, so I might pop in there and see her, but I was just going up to the church. Well, I didn't see Eileen, but I'm going to go back and see her um, before I leave. Um, I had a look around Melmoby Church. Uh, found Eileen's dad's grave. I thought I wanted to go there before I saw her, really. I just wanted to have a look. Um, I'm back at the site now. Plugged in the electric, done a bit of washing up. Tested the water pump, which works. I filled uh, up at a filling station and got that, which I'm not going to use to drink in. I should just use that for uh, washing up and stuff like that. I might use it for, um, drinking, I haven't made my mind up yet, so I've got some bottled water, <coughs> um, there's another camp, camp, camper van now, turned up, and, <coughs> I don't know whether to go up the bar or not, I haven't made my mind up whether to walk up there, just have a look, have a curiosity. Um, I'm really excited by everything, you know, um, the visit to Dalmain, I'm still recovering from that, and I'm intending to go back because I did meet that Robert Hazel McGosh, um, although he didn't know 
I didn't say anything to him, but I met, met him twice at, you know, we were chatting about the weather, so, you know, he's actually related to me, but <coughs> he's got to trace his gene back to uh, 500 years. Right, that's the end of a very interesting tape, and it was a very exciting time when I went to um, Cumbria, especially the visit to Dakar and Dalmain. And I, I do hope I get round to going back up there again another time, because you always get more information and see things in a different light. So this is Sheila, 2010. Over and out.